Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today I will be interviewing a gorgeous and talented actress from Canada. Her name is Rachel Hayward. I actually interviewed her last week, but uh, she, she forgot, I guess, that we were recording. And so she said some things that she regretted, and so we're going to redo it again. She's the star of the 1985 teen sex Canadian comedy Breaking All the Rules. If you haven't seen this movie, fucking see it. It is hilarious, and it's really sweet, and it's just an entertaining flick. I, I love it. It's a lost gem. Also, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. Yesterday was Christmas, and the day before was Christmas Eve, and it was also Stephanie Hodge's birthday. Yes, yeah, Stephanie Hodge, who has been a guest on the podcast before, and will be coming back on real soon. Happy birthday, Steph. I fucking love you. I love you from your belly button to your toes. You are just fucking amazing. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with... Rachel Hayward. What's up, Buttercup? Hello, Tommy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it's been a good Yeah, what did you do? Mm, I ate way too much food. I'm rolling around now. Yeah, I... I was hoping I'd meet a pretty girl that would rub some tinsel on my cock, but it didn't happen. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I wish uh, I wish you good luck on that in the next few days. There's still a few days of the holidays left. Perhaps you'll get some luck. <laughs> yeah, I'll meet some ho ho hoes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So. Going back to the beginning, did you know early on that you wanted to act? No, I did not. It just kind of happened to me. I've, uh, I'm lucky enough to indulge in a little bit of child modeling because my parents were surrounded by photographers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they worked for the Bay and Eaton's and stuff, and it segued into commercials, and then that sort of segued into a couple of acting roles. And uh, it kind of just went like that, very organic wasn't something I ever thought I could do or even I didn't even know it was a job when I was that young mm -hmm. yeah I don't think I knew it either yeah I'm lucky though you know it was cool it was just um, it was a great way to make money you know because mm -hmm. you got to make quite a bit of it as opposed to you know whatever the hourly rate was at the time oh yeah in those days oh my god they were uh, making bank six bucks or something mm-hmm yeah, back then, I mean, everybody was making money doing that. Yeah, I was lucky. I, I, I was really thankful because when I made that money off breaking all the rules, I was able to fly my whole family over to England to see our relatives. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That must have been awesome. Well, it was good because my mom was single mom, so she didn't have a lot of spare cash, and so I just bought everybody tickets to England. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. Did uh, did you do plays or community theater in school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did theater in school, and um, I was in the school year-end play. And um, I was very nervous, hmm. though. You know, it's never, ever been a place where I haven't had the nerves. I'm always nervous when I get on set, it seems, you know? Yeah. I think if you get a series and stuff, and you're <coughs> more comfortable, you can relax a bit, but... Mm -hmm. It's just nerve-wracking. It seems to be that uh, you're all, you're thinking about a lot of things in your head, and you know, it's like I said, it's if I'm doing some comedy stuff with my friends, then it's a bit more freeing. But mm -hmm. when I'm doing the drama stuff, I always find it to be, um, you know, it's it's just not it's not as easy as everybody thinks. You, you you get in your head and you start judging yourself, you know. Yeah. Did um, was did you ever get to play the the lead in plays? Um, I I, I did a play called um, Odd Couple, and uh, we it was a basically it was the changing Felix and Oscar into um to girls. The girls I, I played uh, Oscar, and that was uh, that was I guess the lead in a play. It was up for two weeks at a theater in Vancouver. 
Mm-hmm. But like I said, I didn't do a lot of theater because, you know, I was kind of sort of focused on the money that it was making me, so I was kind of stuck on TV and film stuff, right? And there was so much in Vancouver when I moved here. Like, it's just a mecca of, like, TV and film. Like, you know, we go out a lot. There's a lot going on here, so it's they say you can make a good living, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I like theater, though. I like the idea of theater because it's just more grounding and more organic and just all the all the good things about acting are, you can really get that in theater with the audience clapping for you and the encores, if there are some, but just the rehearsals and getting to know the other actors and really working the piece and stuff like that. I mean, I must say, I don't have a ton of experience, but I have felt what it feels like, and it's very rewarding. When's the last time you did theater? Oh, my goodness. I guess it was The Odd Couple. Um, Has it been so a while? 14 years ago, because I was pregnant at the time. Wow. I was very sick, and I still had to go to these rehearsals. That's how I remember. Wow. 14 years. Yeah. Just a bunch of TV and film since then. Mm-hmm. You should, you should audition for something. I should. I would. I would really like to. I have a friend of mine who does a lot of directing plays. Maybe she'll put me in something soon. Yeah. I mean, if there's a, if there's a good camaraderie there, she she'll probably be happy to. It is. It's just you got to clear your schedule, right? Yeah. And you got to clear it, and you got to do the rehearsal, clear it for the show and stuff, and you got to commit to it. And you know, that's you're saying like for two months that you're not going to make any, you know. Uh, headway on like actual cash, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then your TV and agent, your film agent will call and say, "There's an audition." And you know, when you when you take a, a film thing over over your your theater group, it, it really lets the other actors down, you know. So the best mm-hmm. thing to do is if you if you really want to do theater, you should have some money in the bank so that you can do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I split up with my husband four years ago, so four years ago I kind of became like, you know, the single mom over here, so mm-hmm. it's, a little bit, it's a little bit more important for me to keep the flow going with the dough, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially now that I don't have, like, you know, the husband, right, bringing in all the dough and shit. Right. Right. Less, l- less aggravation there, too. Well, you know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy right now. Oh, that's awesome. I was happy in my marriage too. I was just, I'm pretty happy now. Mm-hmm. So, how did you get We're to? Good yeah, oh, that's good. So, how did you get to audition for Breaking All the Rules? Uh, I think I was a model, and the model agency sent me out for it. I remember I was reading for it, and I don't. I don't remember a lot of callbacks. I think they just hired me for my attitude. <laughs> and they dyed, dyed my hair black. I remember that. Uh-huh. And I don't think, I think it was supposed to be Peter Cronenberg directing. David Cronenberg. wasn't Cro- like the famous Cronenberg guy. It was a Cronenberg. I do believe it was Peter. Oh. I, th- uh, and then James Orr came aboard because some guy fired him, so. Yeah. The next thing uh, we knew, it was James Orr. And I like James Orr. He was good. He, he told me once, when he took me out for dinner, he said that I had no ambition. <laughs> and I remember thinking, it's funny what sticks with you your whole life, you know? Like, that stuck with me my whole life, that I was not an ambitious person. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if that was accurate. It's just funny when people tell you stuff when you're a young kid, you actually just buy it and believe it, you know? Yeah. Well, as we talked about la- last time, you know, we know where he ended up. <laughs> yeah, I think he still works all the time, though. No. Uh, I haven't seen anything he's done in a long ass time. Really? Well, he directed me in that movie, um, Christmas in Wonderland. <clears throat> um, and on my resume, I can figure out when it was, but it, it has to have been like, you know, in the last 10 years anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, well, before Patrick Swayze found out that he had that cancer, because he was he was well on the set, you know. Right. Yeah, and that's 
Yeah, now that you you corrected the Peter Cronenberg thing, I'm like, yeah, I can't even begin to wrap my head around David Cronenberg directing a, a teen sex comedy movie. Well, that's, you know, like, I kind of think I... I just made a little mistake there, and it came to me later. It was like, I think I said the wrong name. <laughs> yeah. I, do, I mean, I mean, David Cronenberg has, been, has become versatile, you know, since he got out of the horror genre. But, no, nah, I don't think a, a movie like this was, is ever going to be on his radar. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it was just a, a movie that just, I think, kind of went straight to video. Yeah. It was a sort of a blip, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, New World Pictures was distributing, you know, exploitation movies like this that, you know, they didn't, in, you know, film themselves, and they were going straight to video. Yeah. Yeah, how I, that's how I discovered this movie, well, as I told you before, when I was 14, you know, I didn't get into the movie at first, and then five years later... You know, I move in across the street from this video store. It's on the shelf. I rent it. I become obsessed with it. I start renting it, you know, once once every other week or so for the next couple of years. And then when both video stores go under, I, <laughs> I, 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 I buy both copies. And I had two copies of it until I was homeless for a while. And I had to give away all my VHS tapes. Yeah. Drag. Yeah. Probably a good collection you had. Oh, I had all the, 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 the classic exploitation movies and, you know, mainstream movies. I had everything. I'm starting the collection again. I'm getting, um, you know, stuff off of eBay, but they just, they, they charge you so much on eBay. Yeah. It's insane. Well, I, like I said, I got a beta copy. Mm-hmm. Did, did, uh, did, have you watched it since we last talked? No. No, I had to do Christmas dinner. The last of my shopping. Get mm-hmm. my kid off to Victoria. I got lots of little people I'm meeting over for coffee over the holidays. Trying to yeah. get my wrists better, you know. I was at the doctor's, so I got some carpal tunnel from sewing too much, you know. Yeah. I'm probably going to have carpal tunnel someday, but that's for another reason. <laughs> well, listen, I like, can imagine how many people get holy bananas. Like your, like your introduction scene. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I, I The well, first time I saw that, I was like, if I ever meet this woman, I have to say thank you. <laughs> Yes, and you continue to do so. (laughs) (laughs) Carl Marode is so great in this movie. He was coming off of My Bloody Valentine and Hard Feelings, and he's just a a really good actor. Yeah, I like Carl. He was always very professional, and um, he was the one actor out of all of us who was clearly experienced. Yeah. And he knew what he was doing, and you could just tell the guy was going to go places, you know, with his mm-hmm. bilingual acting skills. Yeah. I thought he was great in the movie. Oh, God, he's the best. I mean, I thought, I thought we all were, actually. I thought it was a cute little movie. I thought Carolyn was awesome. Mm-hmm. Laura was awesome. Michael Rudder, my fave. Still one of my favorite people. Oh, yeah, did you message him? I didn't message him yet. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's great in the movie. Yeah, I, I've seen him, you know, in, in so many uh, Canadian things. You know, I'm, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I love Canadian cinema. To me, it's, Canadian cinema is just the best. And I've seen him in so many different things. He was there, there was a show, you probably remember, it was up in Canada. It was a horror anthology show called Deadly Nightmares. Mm, don't know it. They call it The Hitchhiker here in the U.S. It was on HBO back in the day, and he was on an episode of that. And he he's, he's really good at playing bad guys. Yeah, he usually gets the bad guys, I guess. Although he's... He's, he's the sweetest, nicest guy, and he's very soft and sweet, you know? 
Yeah, he, he comes off like a teddy bear. Yeah, that's the, that's the teddy bear from the movie, eh? He hides a diamond in a teddy bear. That's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to that, to that, um, not, uh, okay, you, you told me about, um, about the girl. Whatever happened to that guy? Oh, you mean like the, the gypsy? No, the, the heavy set man child. That's with uh, with Michael Rudder and that girl. Oh gosh, I wouldn't even. I can't. I can't even picture his face right now. I mean, I. I just like I said. I. I'd have to see the movie again to be able to reference that. I don't. I don't remember him. I just remember the Gypsy Girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her. She was the real deal, man. She was exactly the character she played, like for real. Yeah. I don't even know if she ever kept acting. Yeah, that's, that, that was her only credit on IMDb I saw. But then, of course, the IMDb is never accurate. Yeah, no, she's, uh, she was wild. She was the real deal. She was, uh, she was fun. Mm-hmm. What was her name again? Papusha Demetrio. Right, Papusha. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't remember that other guy you're talking about. I don't remember him. But now that now that you're saying it, you there was a third person in that trio, right? Yeah. And then, and then what's his name? Um, uh, Walter Massey. Yeah. Yeah, he, I found out that he's that he's Raymond Massey's cousin. Well, that is so cool because I'm still in touch with the Masseys. Really. A message, my buddy. Yeah. Wow. I I, uh, I I I do a sale every year for my fleece sweaters, and uh, um, Binti Massey is uh, one of the kids. Um, Nathaniel was a photographer. He was a one of the cinematographer I worked with several times. Mm-hmm. And his brother is a potter, and his brother's every year he's at the show. Nice. Isn't that interesting, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Okay, so I I will watch it again. Yeah, you know, when you make a movie, you know, a lot of the times you won't see them again or you will work with them again or, <clears throat> you know, you have a, a, a long-lasting friendship with somebody. Yeah. Those Matthews, what a, what a talented bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're one of the... You can tell they're very successful. Yeah, one of the greats, definitely. And, of course... Uh, Thor, you know, went on to become the president of Actra. Yeah, Thor Bishop Rick, I remembered him. Uh, well, of course. He's different these days, I'll tell you. <laughs> he does. Well, uh, you know how we all got older. Oh. <laughs> I think he uh, he was a really cute little guy when I was with him. Though he's a little short kid and good actor, though you know. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, he, uh, you and him have really good chemistry in the movie. Yeah, it's funny. I, I had no chemistry with him. I just thought he was a nice guy. You mean you mean off stage? Yeah. Yeah. On screen. So we, we became like the four, right? We were like we we we, we were like the four musketeers. The four of us just we we kind of just hung out all the time on set. So we became pretty pretty close friends, you know. We mm-hmm. all liked each other. Nobody hated one another, and Everybody, nobody had a problem with the other actor, which is sometimes happens, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do love scenes with a guy you can't, you can't even stand looking at. Oh yeah, that happens quite a bit. There's so many examples of that out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. The. Yeah, I reached out. I reached out to Carol, Carolyn several months ago. I found her on LinkedIn, but I never heard back. I hope she read it. You know. Yeah. Well, she, I I don't even know what's happening with Carolyn. I don't know if she's still in the business, but she sure is a cutie. She was always such a cutie girl. She was a really fun, great girl. Mm-hmm. I have not talked to her since I left the set. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was, she's so great in the movie with that savage T-shirt and that underwear that says, I love you. I know when she's going up the ladder to get out of her house, I remember she escaped from her parents' house and he's waiting for her or something. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, I, think the, I remember. The mother, yeah, the mother was waiting because they're going to go get her hair done. And she she hates the way her hair her hair is. And uh, the, the the gay hairdresser is like, you're, you're cute as a button. And she's like, who would want to fuck a button? <laughs> yeah, that was a good scene. She, she did a great job, that girl. And I wouldn't be surprised if she continued acting because she was such a cutie. Yeah, she did that show, Sweating Bullets. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Sweating Bullets. I wonder if I ever did that, if I ever tried to get on that show. Probably. I mean, it was a pretty popular show in Canada. Yeah, she did have some success afterward, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I think she got into the medical field or something now. Mm -hmm. Something along those lines. But I did, uh, I did interview the guy who plays the uh, the police inspector, Vlasta Veranda. He was a very nice guy, but he has very he has no memory of this movie because he's got over two hundred credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is um okay. So, um, what is it? Thirty four years? Like, I mean, you know, fifty three. So what? Uh, you know, it's a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Thirty-four years. I yeah. I wasn't even twenty years old, for God's sake. Yeah, I mean. Seventeen. Yeah, and he, yeah, and he, he didn't remember. He did, he did some David Cronenberg movies in the seventies that he didn't even remember details of. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I do have a very vivid memory of of my earlier life. I just. Uh, it's actually the work I've done afterward is the stuff I've forgotten more. Um, but that was my first acting experience, so it had a, quite a big impression on me. Mm-hmm. I bet. <laughs> I remember James Orr telling me I had no ambition, that's for sure. Well, it, well, ju- judging from what you told me about how, you know, you weren't taking acting that seriously of, 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 you know, as art, you were doing it for money. That's probably what he meant by that. Oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any problem with that statement at all. I've gone to art college and I'm, I'm an artist and I have a lot of passion about art. It's just, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I, at the time was not sure what I was doing. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was so young. I, I didn't really know the first thing about acting. So, I, I wasn't trying to be an actor at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You and uh, what did you do with? Uh, I forgot. What did you? Uh, what uh, would you say that happened to the dress you wore? Oh, fuck. you know, I had that dress, and <laughs> it's such a drag because I kept it and kept it and kept it. I mean, honestly, I think I <clears> threw <throat> it out like five years ago. Mm-hmm. If I had put it on right now, it would fit me just exactly perfectly. As a matter of fact, it'd be a little loose on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was 17, you know, when you're that age, you're kind of, you know, all 17-like. You know, usually people are, you know, puffy face and just bigger somehow. I think you shrink when you get older, you know? Oh, definitely you do. Yeah. I'm not as big as I was back then. I'm, I'm, I'm 6'3". I'm probably going to be, you know, 5'11 or 6 feet when I'm older. You know? Uh-huh. Well, it's probably a, a, not a bad thing. Yeah. Getting a little bit smaller than when I was in that movie. I think I look like a bodybuilder. <laughs> Be, being big is overrated, I can tell you. Uh-huh. I, I, I go, I walk in certain places and I hit my head without even knowing it. Guy. Yeah. And my weight goes up and down like a toilet, I'll tell you. Right. You know. But, yeah, I mean, I love this movie. It's got such a sweet undercurrent with all the raunchy humor in it, you know. I mean, it's like a love fest. Yeah. Well, I thought that Carl did a very good job. You know, he played a sweet guy. Mm-hmm. And Carolyn played a sweet girl. Angie wasn't so bad. Thor was adorable. I mean, yeah. That was a good 
job. Absolutely. And one thing I always I always didn't like that I that I noticed for a, a lot uh, is that they show a lot of close ups of your feet and your toenails were like your toenail polish was like coming off. And yeah, I don't remember any of that. See? Yeah. <laughs> I always like thought, God, her toenails should be like like nicely pedicured, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't have even known to do that for a movie. Mm -hmm. These days, if I'm on set, my nails are done. You know what I mean? But I, yeah. like I said, I didn't know what I was doing at all. Yeah, and of course, I, I don't. I don't. I, I, I didn't even understand the script when I was shooting that movie. You didn't understand the script at all, like, like. Oh, I didn't know how to break down the script. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what etiquette was on set. I didn't know anything. I knew nothing. I was a model. But you didn't know, like, you know, you didn't understand the story? Probably not. You, you, you know, it wasn't like, you know, the conversations uh, between Angie, between between Angie and Debbie, they're like, yeah, they're what, they weren't like anything like you've had with your girlfriends? No, not at the time. Wow. Um, and it was like after that movie, mm -hmm. I moved out west. I ended up taking acting classes, lots of acting classes. But before I did that stuff, I, I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. The, does that fun park still exist? That I don't know because I haven't been back to Montreal, but it's the Gilles Villeneuve track, right? It's front to side. I would imagine absolutely it still exists. Yeah. Do you, do you know the name of it? No, I don't know it, but huh. I'm thinking that um, if I go through my storage room, I'm wondering if I couldn't find an old call sheet from that movie because I always keep my first call sheet on every movie that I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe I can I can find it. Laronde, yes, it's called Laronde. Laronde. Laronde, yeah, the French R O N D E. Laronde, that's where we shot it. Huh. I could I could look it up on the internet later. Yeah. Wow. That's, it. that's what it's called. See it's in the file. You see. Mm-hmm. I remembered. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love how the movie ends. Everyone's having sex in the little ride. I don't even remember that. <laughs> I, well, I don't think you guys were actually in there. You're just your voices were added later, or not? Oh, or, right. Are you and or not you and Thor, but like Caroline and, and Carl, their voices were. But like, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. David and uh, David and Angie, they're like fucking in, in the ride, and there's firecrackers going off. And then that song, let the music play, I won't get away, is playing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's time for me to see the movie again, it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, I found it here. It's it's Six Flags La Ronde. That's it. Wow, it's a Six Flags park. I, I, I would never have thought so, because it looked so much more fun than the carnivals we have here in the U.S., you know, in my opinion. Well, um, it, it, it was a really cool place to um, shoot the movie. But like uh, I had mentioned, we shot night. Mm -hmm. You didn't do any stuff in the daytime? No stuff in the daytime. Wow. Oh, well, we might have done some stuff in the daytime in other um, locations. Mm -hmm. But don't you notice it's nighttime in all the scenes? Um. I, I do in... Yeah, we did day... We did, sorry, we did day shots when Carolyn and I meet at the bus stop. We did day, you know, day stuff. All this, all the other stuff was day. But the nights were with, with all the carnival stuff, you know? Yeah, when you, and, when you and Carl are on the roller coaster, it looks like it's getting to be dark a little bit. Yeah. That's right. So that must have been one, definitely. And, uh, yeah, that... That 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 uh, we're we're talking about the 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 chorus girl, you know who uh, who uh, you know David has to put that thing on her nipple. Oh right. The the chorus girl, yeah I yeah uh, 
her and I, we have an inter- we have an interview coming up because uh, she's she works in the in the movie industry making films and she has like a film festival and stuff. I'm gonna bring that up to her. She doesn't even know I'm gonna bring it up to her. <laughs> Yeah, she's got yeah she she yeah, I mean she looks the same but she's got like Botox and stuff now. <laughs> um, I don't have any of that stuff yet. Oh, but don't don't get it, right? Don't get it, Rach, because yeah. you you are gorgeous. Well, thank you. Of course. So after the movie is done, so so you so you moved right right out to Los Angeles. No, 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 no. I, I, I stayed in Toronto for a few more years, and I ended up going to art college for four years and getting a degree in a graphic design. Mm-hmm. And then I moved out west and was a graphic designer, and I made some um, more TV and film to support myself. Um, and then I stayed out west, and I just continued to be an artist, and I live as an artist, and I, uh, I'm lucky enough to be in the film industry. Um, and uh, I auditioned for whatever is out here, and I, I, I can sort of make a living by doing my art and shooting a few movies here and there. Mm-hmm. I, I, love do, I love doing acting because I kind of got a, a personality for it. I, I, uh, I'm a friendly uh, professional, and I'm, I, I think I'm good at what I do, you know? Absolutely. I, I think people enjoy being around me, so I, I, and I love people, so... Mm-hmm. I, I sort of, it works out for me, you know? Of course. I'm not a pain in the ass, I know that much. <laughs> I, was, I was reading, did you st- study at the Groundlings? Yes, I did. I went to L.A. for about four years. I, w- I, I, I did go down there and live there for four years. So I, I did a, a six-month stand at, at the Groundlings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I... That was fun, and I, I studied a little bit with Larry Moss, but um, yeah. not a lot, a little bit. Took some acting classes down there. Good. I did some some work with Ivana Chevik. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I moved back to Vancouver. Yeah. Um, I had a relationship down there, and then that was over. So I moved back to Vancouver. My father was up here, and I've been here ever since. Wow. I love it here. Yeah, I was going to say, I interviewed, uh, I've interviewed a couple of groundlings from the 70s. Uh, Lynn Stewart, who played Missy Vaughn on Pee Wee's Playhouse, and um, mm-hmm. Terry Bolo, who plays one of the bitches in Carrie. They're, they're groundlings, and they're pretty awesome. I, I had a hard time with the groundlings because I wasn't, I had a hard time with the U.S. references. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was a Canadian. There was so much reference to U.S. politics and U.S. stuff. I just, I found it uh, a little bit over my head. But um, I also had an issue with my teacher. I think she didn't like me very much. Um, Yeah. I like broad comedy. You know, Jim Carrey. Yeah. Hartman. John Candy. um, Those are... Those are some of my favorites. Of, you know, Jim Carrey being one of my favorites. Um, mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah, all, all the comedians that are dead, I like. All the all the Canadians. Comedians that are dead, yeah. Yeah, uh, John. Even though Jim's still alive, you know, I like. All my favorite comedians are not here anymore. Yeah, mine too. And John Candy is a hero of mine. I love him. I used to. Imitate him around Chris the house, Farley, right? Like Chris Farley is my my ultimate favorite. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. John Candy's dead. Yeah. So you're a big Saturday Night Live SCTV fan? Yeah, I, I like those shows a lot. Yeah. Yeah, me too. They're the best. Uh, I wanted to ask re- really quick, what was it like working on Hellraiser, Hellseeker? You know, I would I would love to be able to tell you. I would I would really love to. Is it Rick Boda? Who directed me in that? I believe so. Um, I just don't really remember. I wish I did because that's such a cult film. And man, when I meet people that are into that movie, they're just like, "You were on that movie." Yeah. Like, yeah, I just totally forget. Uh, it, it, sadly, I I don't have 
a huge re- recollection of it. I know I played some sort of a nurse or something mm-hmm. and a short hair too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I met Doug Bradley at a horror convention two years ago. He was a nice guy. He looked like he didn't want to be there, though. Oh, <laughs> conventions are fun. Oh, yeah, I go to them all the time. Love them. Yeah, well, maybe I'll meet you at one one day. Have you, have, you, have, you, have you signed that one? You know what? If I was to ever go to a convention, it would be for Stargate. Oh, yeah, love Stargate. Um, and then, uh, that's about it. <laughs> no, you want to be a real, you really want to be a working actor when you go to those. So you've got lots to talk about, you know? Of course. Yeah. I see a lot of actors who aren't, and a lot of them that are bitter that they're there, you know? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You want to be happening and lots to talk about when you go to those things. If you haven't been working a lot, then you, you feel a little silly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a weird, weird time, weird world we live in. Sure is. Well, Rachel, I, I mean this sincerely. I, I just thank you so much for making my dream come true. Oh, you're very kind, and thank you so much for the opportunity to chit-chat. Yes, this was a Christmas present and a half for me. And... <laughs> <laughs> And I I hope you have a happy new year, and you know you, you you get to working in 2019. Thank you so much. Yes, and I'll see you on Facebook, and God bless yeah, you. For sure. And then maybe if I get another cool project, we can have another uh, chat. Oh, that would be great. All right, Tommy. Well, you have an awesome day, and happy new year. You too. Happy new year. You're awesome. Thank you. I'll see you soon. See you soon. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Rachel Hayward. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Rachel. I'm glad that we could have a quote-unquote proper version of the interview we did last week. And you're an awesome lady street smart and have a great sense of humor very smart insightful i'm glad we got to talk um if you like this video everyone please subscribe to my youtube channel add me as a friend on facebook join my tommy kovac comedian page on facebook follow me on twitter and instagram and all that fun stuff well that's all time we have this week on splat from the past until next time this is tommy throwback kovac saying There's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.